Microsoft's Windows is used by 1.5 billion people. That's 1.5 billion more friends than I'll ever have. <laughs> But how the heck did it get here? Well, today I'm testing out almost every version of Windows, starting way back 40 years ago to its clunky beginnings, to the OS that we all know and tolerate today. Do, does anyone love Windows? I'm, I'm not trying to be that guy. I am a Mac guy, but I'm not trying to be that guy. But I am fascinated about what made Windows so popular, especially in the 90s. So I've built this custom rating system unlike anything ever seen before. This is brand new. I'll be using this to rate every single version of Windows, focusing on three main pillars, design, functionality, and cultural impact. I don't even really know what that means, but we're gonna use it anyway. To find out once and for all, which version of Windows reigns above them all, because you're watching Legendary Tech. Let's kick off this ridiculous journey with Windows 1. Windows runs on top of MS-DOS, which means installing it, is kind of a pain in the butt. So to check out Windows 1, I'm using this emulator from PCJS Machines. Whoa, Microsoft Windows version one, come on. Immediately my first impressions are how simple Windows is, but I can definitely see how this would have blown someone's mind if they saw this in 1985. Before this, it was just like lines of text on a screen. That's how you interface with the computer. Have a look at some of the apps here. What do we got? Ah, okay, here we go, calendar. Type in, uh, what am I doing at 1 p.m.? Eat lunch. And then what am I doing at 5 p.m.? Eat dinner. It's a packed day. <laughs> what else have we got here? Calculator, very important. Windows had a calculator before the iPad. Let's go. Paint. These all look pretty dang familiar. Come on. This is a box. The box is friendly. But don't get too close. He'll nip at your fingies. Nice. All right, boys and girls, Windows number one. Let's have some fun. I don't really know where I want to, I don't know what side I'm putting the graphic on. I'll go this way. I don't really know what side, how I want to rate this. Uh, I can't give it a mid tier section because it's the first version of Windows. Now, to be fair, the design for the time is pretty freaking unreal, but not nearly as nice as Mac OS. Functionality, however, I'm sure was pretty dang good. Cultural impact, well, it's where it started, so. Let's put this bad boy, you know what, I'm gonna put it in the A tier. It just feel, I just, it feels right. It's not God tier. All right, moving on. Next up is Windows 2. Windows 2 continued to improve on Microsoft's GUI interface. So let's check it out. First impressions, it's pretty much the same as Windows 1. Not a lot has changed except one very significant feature, stackable windows. Check this out, baby. Let's see if paint was any different in Windows 2. I feel like this is pretty much the same. I draw that in, art. What I will say, and hear me out, this is a very Apple fanboy thing to say, but Mac OS just slaps more, bro. <laughs> I'm missing those curved edges of the GUI. I don't know why I did the hand shape. That's kind of weird and freaky. All right, Windows version two, let's do a, I'm not gonna say that. Honestly, pretty much the same as Windows one from a design point of view. From a functionality point of view, actually pretty impressive. They made some good steps here. Cultural impact, who came up with this dumb rating system? Look, I don't know, it's kind of, it's there. I'm gonna put it in the B tier. I'm pretty nonchalant about it. There's not, but things were about to get a little fancy with Windows 3. It introduced 32-bit architecture and it also implemented the NTFS file system. So let's check it out. So already you can see some differences with Windows 3. The UI has been cleaned up a little bit. Plus the new icons are iconic. We've got the usuals. What does the calculator look like? All right, it's clean, it's clean. I kind of preferred the calculator in Windows 1, but this, this will do, this will do. Now, what I do see down the bottom here is games, solitaire, Oh, dude, this is such a throwback, man. What else we got, Minesweeper? No one actually knows how to play this game, right? This is, I feel like, okay, maybe I know how to play this game. I do not know how to play this game. <laughs> Next up, we have Windows 3. Now this is where things were starting to get a little fancier. Again, pretty similar to Windows 2, so I'm just gonna throw it here in B. They're kind of the same thing in my head. Actually, no, we're gonna put it in C. <laughs> just, I don't know, we've got to spread this thing out here. The next one on our list is Windows 95. This was the first version of Windows to introduce the start menu. The start menu, baby. As well as the taskbar and just a generally more intuitive user interface. Windows 95 sold over 40 million copies and it pretty much became a household name. And I tested it out extensively uh, in a video where I tried to run Minecraft on this thing. 
Yeah, uh, but this is what the world was using in 95. This thing is the best. Ah, dude, look, I'm gonna be super biased about this because I love Windows 95. Where are we gonna put you? Yeah, jokes, we're putting you right at the top. S tier, baby. It was the Windows that made Windows Windows. Well done, Windows 95, you absolute champion. Next up was Windows 98, which was released in, you guessed it, 1998. I was two years old. Now by this point, the dot-com boom was in full force. Windows was dominating. So let's check it out. Woo, there it is. That is an iconic logo, dude. Okay, here we go. Windows 98. Oh my gosh, I haven't finished setting it up. Okay, uh, Windows product key. Uh, where am I gonna get that from? Uh, well, this could be as much Windows 98 that we see today. Okay, some quick context here. As you may have guessed, I'm running Windows in a virtual machine on my MacBook, which means it's not super Super stable. This version of Windows 98 was like the third or fourth version I tried, except I could not get the activation key working. And after arguably way too long of trying to get a generic product key to get this thing working, I accepted my losses. So let's call this one a blind rating, as if my rating system holds any credibility. <laughs> oh, Windows 98, no need to hate. It's a pretty weak rhyme, huh? Uh, <laughs> now, Windows 98 technically didn't work. However, it is very similar to Windows 95. Not exactly the same. It still had its own advantages. So I'm going to put it somewhere, you know, I'm going to put it here in B with Windows 2. Like I said, Windows 98, no need to hate. Just no need to love either. It's, it's kind of in the middle. Next on our list of iconic Windows releases is Windows 2000. I remember using it at school. I remember using it at home to play Age of Empires. Woo, that was so good. Oh yeah, Windows 2000 professional. Cause we professionals out here, baby. Now, as you can see, it's pretty similar. Microsoft weren't in a rush to change a design that was working. There's something about that like, is it green? I don't even know what the background is. Oh, just feels so classic. Maybe the calculator got updated, let's have a look. No, it's pretty much exactly the same. Why do I distinctly remember this photo? Here we go, boys. Windows 2000, don't be a... Dude, I can't come up with a rhyme for that. Windows 2000. Look, for me, this is a similar feeling operating system to 95. Not nearly as nostalgic as 95, but it's up there. And to be fair, this was the time where Everyone was using PCs, man. But again, design-wise, I'm pretty just like, eh, it just exists. I'm gonna throw it in the B tier. B tier is good for Windows 2000. It's a banger, but like, it's not a banger. All right, next up we have Windows Me. Yep, that's right. This is a bonus Windows. You may not have heard of this one before. This couldn't look more early 2000s if it tried. Windows Me was heavily criticized. Many users mentioned that it was less reliable than previous releases. And Microsoft faced criticism for its instability. Okay, it's not that different to Windows 95, but we do have Windows Media Player. Let's load that up. Oh yeah, actually, this is a throwback. I totally remember Windows Media Player being like this. Obviously we have to check out the uh, calculator. Ah, there we go. Okay, I think this is by far the best calculator so far. MSN Messenger, Windows Movie Maker, baby. That's a throwback. That's such a throwback. Windows Me seemed to have like a lot of gain. Oh, baby, are you freaking kidding me? Yes, this is all I wanted. Oh, I always tried to get it in the tunnel. Yes. No, straight down the middle. Next up, Windows Me, Buzzy B. Was that a week of rhyme than the last time? I can't tell. Windows Me is kind of like the random middle sister, you know? Like my sister, she's just there. I don't really know why she's there. Could have just been me and my brother. No, I'm totally kidding, I love my sister. Uh, Windows Me, like functionality wise, yes, it's, it's a move in the right direction. Things are getting a little bit spicier. Things are getting a little bit better. Design wise, yeah, I think by this point, I'm getting a little bit over the grayscale thing. There's not a lot of life to Windows in this era. I'm gonna throw it in C tier. <laughs> Sorry me, I just, uh, you're just kind of there, bro. I don't, I don't know. The next version of Windows is an iconic version of Windows. Yep, we're talking about Windows XP, baby. Windows XP was a massive shift for Microsoft. Do you hear that? Do you hear that magic? <laughs> it became one of the most used operating systems of all time. Let's see if it still holds up to this day. Oh, yes, let's go. So iconic, so iconic. Those rolling hills. This brings me back, dude. Even more than Windows 2000, this brings me back. Let's hit some pinball and away we go. Oh, yes. So many hours in school playing pinball when I really shouldn't have been. Could have been doing drugs. Uh, <laughs> it is hard to beat the overall aesthetic 
of Windows XP. It's so freaking, it's so freaking good. Gone are the gray windows and in with the blue. Oh, it's so obnoxiously bright. It's like someone just cranked the saturation. Windows Movie Maker. Now this really does throw me back because this was the app that I used to first edit videos in. This is the first way I used to make videos. I used to hack Windows Movie Maker so I can install different effects like using a blue screen. I wonder if I could edit one of these videos in Movie Maker on XP. I might have to come back to that. Very importantly, calculator. Oh yeah, look at that, a whole new redesign. This was the stuff, dude. Everything about Windows XP to me screams childhood and I don't even have to say anything because you know what I'm gonna say. Windows XP, dude. Windows XP, I'm not even gonna tell you why. I'm just gonna put it right up there in S tier because Windows XP. I mean, people still use Windows XP to this day. It's been outdated for a decade. And sure, in hindsight, it's a lot, but it was something different. It was completely different to anything at the time. Cultural impact, it's there. I don't even have to explain it. Everyone used XP, so let, let's keep it up there. S tier, Windows XP, you son of a gun. Windows XP, you're the only operating system I see. I'll get one good, I'll get a good one, I promise. Next up, we have Windows Vista. Now, uh, hmm. <laughs> this is where things got a bit weird, in my opinion, with Windows. See, initially, I loved the idea of Vista. It reminded me of Mac OS X, and so I just thought, hey, finally, Windows is catching up. But, uh, <laughs> Vista is kind of a meme at this point because it really didn't function as well as it should have. So let's check this out. Oh. I don't know why, I don't know if I'm the only person who cares about this, but I love that the start menu sits just above the taskbar. Bro, I just had the biggest flashback with Windows Live Messenger. Bro, Windows Live, dude? That's how you know you're getting old. I remember MSN to Windows Live. Here is good old Internet Explorer far out. The windows, like the literal windows of all of the applications aren't that different to what you have now. Look at those little glows. Oh man. Do you know what we're doing right now? We have to check it out. The calculator. Wait, that's exactly the same. That's like not even different. Okay, the, the window itself is different. That's exactly the same as XP. <laughs> this one's gonna be a hard one. Uh, Windows Vista. I think Windows Vista sits in A tier. And here's why. I know the functionality and performance was shocking. It, it's chunky. It still doesn't run very well now. To be fair, I tried to run it on my iPhone, but cultural impact, how much people struggled with Vista. So I'm gonna, you know, I think it sits in a good spot culturally. I think it was very important, but I will say design wise, I am a huge fan of how Vista looks. I know that sounds nuts, but it's just so freaking good. Windows Vista, I wish you were just this little bit better, but still, thank you for the memories. Next up, we have Windows 7. And in a lot of ways, Windows 7 made up for a lot of the criticisms that people had about Vista. Okay, okay, okay. Still got Vista vibes. It still has the aero thing going on. It feels a bit more refined. It feels a bit more clearer. It still has some of those cool quirks. Like I love, I love the way the Windows logo glows down here. It's such a little thing. It just feels like a simpler, cleaner experience all around already. Uh, first things first, calculator, obviously. Mwah. Thank goodness, it's fine. It's actually a little bit different. Whoa, we got games for days over here. Purple place. Wait a second, my brain just had a massive unlock. Okay, Windows 7, let's go. Big change for Microsoft. Honestly, this is completely different to Vista and probably a good welcomed change. I don't know if people cared too much about the interface. I think they cared more about its stability. So boys, if you're looking for a girl, it's not about how you look, it's about how stable you are. This was the start of the current era of Windows, right? And design point of view, I actually really like Windows 7. I think it's super, super clean. I like how minimal it is. They're obviously taking a lot of uh, design cues from another company that makes operating systems, but I like it. Windows 7, we're gonna put you in, uh, let's put you in A. Uh, is that too high? B, we're gonna put you in B, we're gonna put you in B. Next on the list is Windows 8, more specifically Windows 8.1. The year was 2012. Remember when we all thought the world was gonna end? By this time, the app economy is going crazy, iPhones are everywhere, and so Windows 8 was Microsoft's answer to that, and uh, you'll see. So one of the biggest criticisms of Windows 8 was the removal of the standard task and start menu. Instead, they replaced it with panels. I don't hate this as much as I thought I would. I weirdly love the simplicity, how clean it is. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of character and it's hard to tell with the incredibly low resolution it's running at. But I remember when this came out, the internet was livid. Oh, it's not doing good, dude. 
Oh my gosh. I'm just going to let this one rest, I think. Oh no. Okay. 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 No, Windows 8. Windows 8, uh, it's going to sit pretty low. A, B, C, D could be a D tier. I think it's a D tier one, man. I'm so sorry, Windows 8. But those tiles are just not it. Maybe as a bonus thing, they could have worked, but to replace the start menu completely is wild. Next up on our list, and we're getting pretty close to the end, we have Windows 10. Obviously, Microsoft had a lot of experience with the Xbox, and so they brought a lot of that over to Windows 10. Now, this looks like I'm having problems here. Ah, oh, frick me. Come on, Windows 10, don't do this to me. Don't be the one that screws up, Windows 10. Ah, uh, yeah, Windows 10 was giving me a hard time too. Again, I tried a bunch of different versions and I just couldn't get it past this reboot logo. So if anyone's done this before, yeah, let me know what I'm doing wrong here. So again, kind of a blind rating here, though of every version I have used Windows 10 a fair bit. It's still one of the cleanest Windows operating systems in my humble opinion. Again, as if any of my rating system has any credibility. <laughs> This whole video has just been me rating the calculators. Bless you, Windows 10. Brought back the start menu. So good. I don't think it's the most interesting thing, but I don't think it's God tier. I think we're sitting Windows 10 in the A. In the A tier? Nah, it's pretty high. Maybe the B tier. We're going to go to the B tier. What's happening with current Windows operating systems is very similar to what happened in the 90s. We're just starting to see it the same thing a little bit, which is cool. Just a little lackluster. To be fair, Mac OS is also exactly the same too. So I don't wanna be that guy, but yeah, just uh, I expect a little bit more. Last, but definitely not least, is Windows 11. Now, of course, as you can see, they shuffled everything around with 11. The start button is now down here in the middle. Now, of course, we need to check out the old calculator. Okay, okay, yep. Yep, that makes sense. I mean, it's the most simple form you could do, but I like it, that makes sense. I do really like how they've laid this out. This is really, really sweet. And it's a really easy way to get to all your settings, right? Now, I will say the one thing I don't really love about <laughs> Windows is this. The built-in news, the built-in stream of content they kind of throw at you. Windows 11, straight to heaven. That's a pretty good rhyme. That's not a bad rhyme. I don't know how to feel about the centered dock thing. Uh, from a functionality and performance point of view, uh, I don't dig this. Oh, I don't need the stream of news. I'm sure other people feel the same. So Windows 11, I'm putting you in B tier. I kind of want to see what you do next, Microsoft, because yeah, Windows 11 could be better, could be up there. Look, undeniably, the world owes a lot to Microsoft and Windows. And I know I goof around a lot in this video about being a Mac guy, but genuinely, Mac OS wouldn't be here without Windows. Every version, of course, played an important part, but it is so hard to go wrong with Windows 95 and Windows XP. And I think Windows XP for me will forever have a special place in my heart. Movie Maker was really the first bit of software that I used to edit videos. And to be still doing that almost 20 years later is just kind of nuts. So comment down below, which version of Windows did you grow up with? I'm gonna go have some chicken tacos. See you in the next video.